I'm a Sagittarius, so I'm just blunt and honest. No, you're just Susie. Stop using that as an excuse. That's how we chat. Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited for today's video as I am about like every single video but in today's video we're going to be talking all about identity which oof, this is a big one and I have a little story to share with it. I was doing some reflection recently and the topic of identity kind of came back up and it really got me thinking and I specifically thought back to I want to say like late 2020 when I went through when God brought me through a dark time I would say. I talked about it in one of my videos where I talk about building a personal relationship with God. I talk about how God brought me through a season of like depression and suicide thoughts to kind of like the happier side so make sure you go watch that video I'm going to pin it up here but when I went through that season something very very weird happened that made me realize the importance of identity from about like 2014 when I was about 13 14 years old till about late 2020 like I mentioned in that video I struggled with a lot of um I struggled with a lot of depression I wasn't medically diagnosed but I showed all the symptoms and I also struggled with suicidal thoughts literally every single day of my life I just I just didn't want to be here not to make light of the topic but that was just my life for that was up that's about what's the math about six seven years i would say i went through all that in 2020 i kind of god was kind of bringing me out of that moment and something so strange happened that made me really realize the importance of not tying certain things to your identity as i mentioned at the beginning of this video sometimes we tie things like people have said to us astrology um social media whatever the case might be we tie a lot of things to our identity and the weird thing I, that happened was as god was bringing me through that transitional period of going from being sad in that dark space to a happier space a place of peace and joy it was a strange little part of me that almost wanted to stay depressed and sad and it was so strange because the whole point of it the whole point of me doing that whole prayer and like building my relationship with god and yada 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 not the whole point but one of the catalysts to me doing that was to get out of that it was because i got sick and tired of being down all the time so it was so strange to me that i realized that part of me still wanted to be that it was like girl like we're seeing the rainbow why do you want to go back to the rain it was so strange to me but i had to realize that this was something that i claimed as part of my identity day in day out for six seven years when it came to suicidal thoughts it wasn't something that i struggled with like every now and then this was like a constant day in day out thought that i had when i was driving when maybe something bad happened in my day like it was a day in day out the phrase like i want to kill myself was a phrase that me and my friends said a lot in high school it was like it was something that we said i want to say at least two to three times a day it was just something that we said constantly around each other something literal could go wrong i don't care myself like i kind of had to go back to god like yo what is going on like i'm seeing the rainbow right now you're about to bring me through this and some weird part of me wants to stay down and i was just like this doesn't make any sense and i had to realize like i said i claimed this as part of my identity me saying that out loud i wasn't just no longer feeling it internally i was now saying it and i can't emphasize the importance of there is power in our tongue even the bible says it we're gonna go to scripture yes proverbs 18 21 said there's power of life and death in our tongue and that's why i'm very mindful of not speaking every feeling out and i'm somebody that like i like to get my feelings out i like to chat even if it's not with somebody out my snapchat is my diary i like to say these things out loud but sometimes i have to realize that it's okay to have certain feelings all i can do is simply pray for the holy spirit to help me shut down that feeling the moment you begin to say certain things out loud you begin to bring them to life there's power in your tongue you start seeing these sayings that they might seem really common but the more you say it the more it becomes part of your identity and the more you begin to claim it and one of the seasons that i'm in right now is like i'm realizing that my parents are right there were certain things we'll say but our parents were like nah you can't say that like it's not it's so deep like you can't say that they'll make a really big deal out of it and i feel like as kids we were always yo it's not that deep it's not that deep it's not that deep nah it is that deep there are certain things that you should not just say one thing about me i don't care how funny your joke is you would never hear me utter the words i'm dead what, what 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 was so funny that I'm dead? Nothing is funny. Like there's certain things that we just don't need to say out loud because although they might seem little, it's not so easy to like change. Like me saying I'm gonna kill myself, with my friend. It was just a casual saying. It was like saying hi. Like it was just a casual saying that we said all the time. But in that process, I made it part of my identity, and it wasn't so easy to just stop saying it because again, it was something that I did. It was something that was part of my identity that I then had to go back to. I'm like God, you gotta deliver me from this because what is this weird feeling that you're trying to make me see the rainbow and some strange part of me still wants to stay 
in the valley like someone wants to stay in the rain like it just didn't make any sense so be very very mindful of what you say and i feel like sometimes we're so used to praying for like healing or deliverance when it's like how about we just avoid the whole valley altogether like if it's possible there's certain things that are avoidable we still go through because we feel like oh we need to learn a life lesson or something god can teach you a lesson in a different way you don't have to go through certain like moments and identity crisis if you don't have to and this also ties into a big topic which is astrology i might ruffle some feathers but I'm gonna say what I need to say. You can have your opinion, go to God, pray about it, but I'm gonna say what I wanna say. I don't believe in astrology. I don't think it's biblically sound. I don't feel the need to claim my identity to something like that. And every now and then, if people ask me, I will say I'm a believer, but I'll tell them like, I don't believe in that. Or sometimes I'll joke like, I'm a child of God. Like that's my that, that's my sign. Like my sign is I'm a child of God. Astrology is a big one because people really tie their identity to astrology. And I share this because people will say things like, I'm a Virgo, so X, Y, Z. I'm a Sagittarius, so I do this. I'm a this, so I do this. And my whole thing is like, there's this box that they've created where it's like Libras are X, Y, and Z. Even if you're not that, because this box has now told you that that's what you are because you were born in October, you are now gonna claim your identity to it. Again, with the power of life of tongue. I remember when, I don't know much about astrology, but I remember one of the things that they said about um, Libras is that they're indecisive. So guess what? And I do struggle with that a little bit, but even more so, I begin to use it as an excuse. Like, oh yeah, I'm a Libra, so I'm indecisive. I'm very indecisive. And again, I'm now claiming this. I'm now claiming indecisiveness as part of my identity when it's like, you don't have to do that. Although that thing says that, and maybe I might fit into one of those boxes, I don't have to claim that as part of my identity. I can simply go to God, like, God, help me be more sound in my decisions. Help me to make better decisions and call it a day. Same thing with other, I don't know what other traits of other signs are. Let's say, um, I don't know, you're blunt. Now you'd be like, oh, I'm blunt. And sometimes let's be, let's keep it, let's even take it, uh, let's take it, let's even take it away spiritually. Some of us, we use that thing as an excuse. Oh, I'm a, I don't know the signs well. I'm a, I don't know the signs. <laughs> I'm a Sagittarius, so I'm just blunt and honest. No, you're just Susie. Stop using that as an excuse. You'd be like, oh, I'm this, so I'm just this. Way. No, that's who you are. Stop using this thing as a show to then justify certain bad decisions. I just had to throw that in really quick. And if we're being realistic, if you look at each and every sign, I'm pretty sure you're gonna find some type of trait that you're gonna tie to your personality in each different sign. But because they told you that since you're born in October or since you're born in November, you're now tied to this sign. You're now be like, no, this is who I am. You've read what it said, and now you're not claiming that as part of your identity. You might not even be an indecisive person to begin with, but because that thing said that you are, and you feel like, okay, I'm a Libra, therefore I am indecisive. You're not claiming that personality. You're not claiming that identity of indecisiveness when realistically, in your nature, that might not be something that you struggle with, but because something has said that, you've not claimed that. I, don't, I gotta appreciate that really quick, but I just really wanna emphasize the importance of what you claim as your identity. A lot of these things are not, there are a lot of things that I'm learning more and more and I need to get very, I, I can't, you know what's so funny about life? <laughs> I'm in a, like I said, I'm in a phase like my parents are right and all that tech, but I'm also in a phase of looking at myself, I'm like, dang, like 13 year old Kevin be like, girl, calm down, it's not that deep. But now nah, you do grow up and realize that life is that deep sometimes. And astrology is just one of them, especially the indecisive one, because that is something that I felt like I struggled with. And I then, when I learned that, okay, Libra's right, indecisive, I truly, honestly made it seem like, okay, that's an okay thing to be, to be indecisive. Like, uh, girl, I'm just a Libra, I'm just indecisive. Even if it was something that I know I could have worked on, I know I could have prayed to God about, but I was like, nah, that's just a trait that I am because I'm born in October. And now I then claim that I don't have to do that. And that's why I don't fully believe in astrology because you're claiming these things to your identity that you don't need to claim to your identity. The only person your identity should be rooted in, the only thing your identity should be rooted in is God and his word. That's important. Another level of this is also things that people have said to you. I know a lot of times people say things to us when we're younger and we just think that they don't affect us, but we claim that as part of identity. And I feel like, learning about yourself more and more you begin to uncover a lot of things and life is a long long journey of therapy with yourself and actual therapists realizing like oh 
that's why I'm like this, or, oh, that's why I'm this way. One of it could be like, maybe you're really passionate about something and you're sharing something very, very excitingly. Someone was like, girl, you're annoying. Like, girl, you talk so much. And you claim that as part of your identity. So now every single time you want to talk, you you remember that comment and you almost censor yourself to where you know you're almost hindering your growth in life because you've claimed this saying that somebody has said to you and you've made it as part of your identity. A personal one for me is that my pronunciation of things, I talk really fast and I mumble sometimes. It's that I struggle with a little bit because I will never forget when I came back from Nigeria in 2012 and we moved back here like pronunciation and the whole accent thing was such a big big deal for me because of course after coming back from Nigeria I'm gonna have a thick accent and I'll never forget that one time I was in class we were in English class and I had to read something and I hate reading because again people are gonna notice my accent I had to read something and I said Hercule and I said Oh, something, something, Hercules. It was Hercules. I didn't know how to say it. The English language is weird. But I would never forget, the girl was like, did she just say Hercules? And from that day forward, I happened in eighth grade when I was like 12 or 13. I'm now 24. I remember that moment vividly. And ever since then, I'm very, very cautious of my pronunciation of things because of what that girl said. Again, that was something little that happened that we claimed as not part of our identity. I remember even watching a video of, I believe her name is... I can't remember her name, but I'm gonna add her on the screen. She does these like street interviews and she was asking people like, what's the most hurtful things that people have said to you? Some of these people were in their 40s, 50s, some of them older, some of them like maybe in their 20s, 30s. And they were all recanting these things, one of the most hurtful things that people have said to them. And it wasn't something that people said a few years ago. They were remembering things that people said to them when they were young. And I'm talking about like five years old, six, when they were starting to understand comprehension. And like I said, some of these people were in their 40s and 50s and they still remember that. There are a lot of things that people have said to us that we tie to our identity. And we don't even realize how much it affects us until we start thinking about it. And we're like, wait a minute. That's why I act this way. And it's so important to do a lot of inner work, astrology aside and all that aside, but to truly figure out like, why do I act, things like you're subconscious about, truly take some time and reflect and think, maybe there was something that somebody said to me that's now making me subconscious about things and that make me this way. I even think about this when it comes to the whole topic of plastic surgery. I feel like a lot of people will not get plastic surgery unless somebody pointed out an insecurity in them. Let's say you have, I don't know, sticking out ears. I don't think you'd be as aware of your ears if somebody didn't point it out to you and make you feel like, okay, you now have big ears and you've now claimed that identity and you're like, oh my gosh, I now need to be subconscious about this thing. And this one is a really, really tough one because sometimes these things that are said, they're said by loved ones, like, especially if you're younger, it could be said by like your aunt, your uncle, your mom, and like you've claimed that and they affect us a lot later on in life. And this is one that I'm really, really making sure to no longer identify with things that people have said to me, either hurtful things that they've said to me, I've heard it, and I just clung onto it and I feel like, okay, that's who I am just because somebody said it. Even if you say you're annoyed, like, girl, I'm wise. Like, sometimes we just need to like, let these things fly over our ears and it's not easy, trust me, I get it. Cause some people will say something to you like, dang, tell me how you really feel. And it's really, really hard, but we really have to learn that. We have to let these things fly and our identity is only rooted in God. And just so this video is not like 10 hours long, I'm gonna share one story and then I'm gonna wrap it up. Our identity can also be rooted in other people. I'll never forget there was a moment in life where if I didn't have a boyfriend within the next 30 seconds, I was gonna have a real nice conversation with God because what is going on? And it was one of those moments where God really wanted to talk to me. He wanted to check my heart. I remember I went to the gym that day and God was like, can you go on a walk? And I was like, God, I just did some stretching. Like, what more can I do today? But he told me to go on a walk and I played the song Gyra. And I heard that song already like a thousand times. And this is why I love to hear things over and over. Sometimes you have to read the Bible and over and over to get different definitions. And God gave me a revelation that day that I already had the greatest love in him. Like, God is my greatest love. Nobody, nothing can fill the love of God. There's a certain, I don't want to say we all have a void in us, but there are parts, I guess a void is a way to say it. God is the only one that can fill that desire in our heart for a lot of things up there. It's wealth, success, relationship, money, I don't care what it is. God is the only one that can fill our hearts truly with that love. And that was the word that God gave me that day that no matter who it is, I don't care who I bring into your life, you already you already have the greatest love of all, and that is God. God loves you. It says in it says in Psalms 139, before I knew you, I formed you in your mother's room. Like I think we need to I think sometimes we really gotta gas ourselves up like 
I have a direct call to the one who created the whole earth. Like God, that's my God. And I think when we gas ourselves up sometimes, I think we truly help to let go of like, nah, God knew exactly who I was and he created me. Even if that person said I was annoying, God didn't say I was annoying. Even if that person said I wasn't too cute, God didn't say that. God said I was beautifully and wonderfully made. Who do I care what that random person said to me on the internet? No, because I know who I am. This is not, this is not a journey that you're gonna finish tomorrow. It might not be a journey you finish in the next year. It might take the next few years, if not decade, of you learning God's love. It's not an easy one, but it's one that I'm truly learning the points of like, that's me and God. Like he, he, that man loves me. He loves me and he cares for me. And he like, he wants the best for me and like, he thinks I'm beautiful. He thinks I'm worthy. He thinks I'm capable. He sees me for who I am. My identity is not rooted in like my auntie. My identity is not rooted in whether or not I have money in my bank account. My identity is not rooted in if I have a husband or not. It's simply rooted in God. And that's what God really showed me when I listened to that song that I'm already loved. I'm already chosen. God knows exactly who I am. He created me. And like, if I just know that in my heart's of heart, I'm good. Yeah. I might have to make up parts of the video because we tie our identities to a lot of things. The call is coming from inside the house, by the way. I'm not giving, I'm not sharing this video from a high and mighty, I've overcome it. The call is coming from inside the house. I'm still struggling with some of these, like I always say. But God is working on us and we're a work in progress. So I definitely might share a lot of things because sometimes we tie our identity to social media. We tie our identity to validation. If you feel like you're not accomplishing something, how do you feel about yourself? You tie your identity to whether or not you're in a relationship because if you're not in a relationship, who are you? All that, we tie our identity to a lot of things in life. So I might make a separate video about this at a later date, but I did want to just drop this one right now to let you know that, that your identity should only be rooted in Christ. It should only be rooted in his word and what he says about you. Not what anybody else says, not what the world says, nothing else and nobody else but God himself. Anyway, that's it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. Comment down below, share your thoughts, your opinions on all this stuff. I love to have discussion with you. I see you guys watching the videos, but I wanna have more conversations. So make sure you comment down below. I would love to hear feedback. I would love to hear your thoughts. Yeah, that's it for me. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. God said I'm wonderful and beautiful. Who can tell me otherwise? Nobody.